Hi, I'm David Gross with Condi Systems, back with you to share a little bit of my wisdom for sublimation success. Well, today we find ourselves in the Condi Print Services facility, also doubles as one of our R&D facilities, and if you hear lots of noises like saws and things like that, it's because we're right in the center of a lot of exciting activity here at Condi Systems. Well, today I'm here to introduce a brand new product and it's from our friends at Universal Woods. We know them better as Unisub. And this product is under the Chromalux family of products, and it's the Chromalux Natural Wood product. Now, the construction of this product is, it uses an MDF interior. MDF stands for medium density fiberboard. And then it has a natural maple veneer on top of it and the back. Makes it a great product. Before we get to it, I want to tell you how we got here and, and the evolution of this product. First is over here is a piece of the Chromalux metal. And the Chromalux metal um, has been what has fueled the huge success of sublimation in the photo industry. It's a fantastic product. Um, people refer to it as Chromalux HD, things like that. And you can see all my videos. And so this was sort of an evolution, and, and it allowed us to say, okay, what other products do we need to grow into substrate-wise? And the next product that we grew into is, is called MDF. And this is the MDF product with the, um, with the Chromalux very thick coating on it. And so, so the new product we're talking about, the natural wood, really is a hybrid of this product. Now, the things that make the natural wood product so unique is that you can see the wood veneer, okay? Um, and, and so the wood veneer in this particular case is going, going vertical. You can also obviously transfer it to it with landscape as well, and the wood veneer goes the other direction. The coating on this is a semi-matte coating or what we refer to as semi-gloss. And with the natural wood color behind the substrate, images that lend themselves to having light colors in the background probably are going to look the best. I have done a lot of images, and certainly images with backgrounds removed or things like that allow the foreground image to be very, very persistent, very noticeable, and they look great. I pushed it to all the kinds of uses I can think of. For instance, I did this plaque for my church. And of course, it just has a beautiful, rich color, very expensive looking substrates. So the Chromalux Natural Wood product is now available in a good family of sizes and will continue to grow as the product line expands. Uh, on the back of the product are the mounting holes for putting it on the wall. You could also put in the easel as I have also done for different things. Uh, one of the things that we all should remember and that is before you press it, look on the back to verify that you're pressing in the correct orientation for the holes. Or if you watch my video on my wall of shame, you'll be putting this piece on your wall of shame. So the purpose of this video is to walk you through pressing larger pieces. Now let's talk real quick about pressing larger pieces of pretty much anything. There are different challenges as the product gets bigger in sublimation. The biggest challenge that we, we suffer when we go to a bigger piece of anything uh, has always been moisture. Uh, moisture, as we know from physics, when we, when we heat moisture it turns into steam and steam will greatly interfere with the sublimation process. The sources of moisture for sublimation are really three. Number one is we can actually have moisture at our heat press, and we'll talk about that. Number two is we can have moisture come from our paper. And then number three is we can have moisture come from the substrate. Now, when we heat this substrate up, the moisture can come from the interior portion of it. It can also come from the coating. We need to deal with those issues or we're not going to get good results. Uh, fortunately, um, I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, as I walk you through how to do 
pressing these pieces. Please remember that as I shoot this video, we're going to post it, and then we'll have an evolution. We'll learn more and more about pressing this, and we can revise our instructions as we go along. So, I'm not going to give you exact details as far as times go, because I'm going to post those on the product page for the Chromalux Natural Wood products. And so, in just a minute, we're going to start pressing the Chromalux Natural Wood products, and I hope you'll introduce this product to your clients. Okay, I'd like to introduce two things. First, I'd introduce our very competent, capable, great guy, Antoine. He's our press operator. And, of course, introduce our George Knight Maxi Press. This is a pneumatic press, and pneumatic presses are absolutely critical to the success of products like this because manual presses just will not ever give you the kind of even, strong pressure you need. First is, we're at our press, and if you look underneath the, the press here, this right here is a Nomex pad, all right? And so there is no rubber pad on these presses. Underneath the Nomex pad is a piece of cardboard, and this cardboard collects moisture. And again, the sources of moisture are incredibly important that we deal with. And during the course of a day, for instance, this pad may be drenched with moisture if you press a whole lot. So you need to be aware of moisture. You, you, you need to make sure that we're dealing with any moisture problems that crop up. Um, so we put our little cover paper on here. And the first step we're going to do is, again, in dealing with moisture, is we're going to go through um, push, putting this in the heat press without closing our press just to make sure that the press is completely dry. So Anton closes the press and we're just going to hover over the top of the image for you know 15 seconds or so just to ensure that that paper is bone dry. Um, as the print gets bigger, maybe a little bit longer, and again one of the things that I recommend you do is document your successes, your failures, document your kinds of questions. I bet that's long enough, Antoine. All right, so now I've got my press set for 400 degrees. Most things in the world of sublimation, as you know, 375, 400 degrees, things like that. Again, refer to our instructions for exact details because over time we're going to revise our instructions, but we'll still have this video. Also, I've set the press for very heavy pressure, um, and that is quite necessary to do a good job with pressing a product that really is a core MDF with that natural veneer on it. Our next step is to pre-press the Chromalux Natural Wood product, doing that for a couple of reasons. One is we want to make sure it's as flat as possible. Number two is we want to get rid of as much moisture as we can. So Antoine, put that piece of paper on top and let's press it. Again, refer to our instructions for, for my suggested, but for here we're going to press for about 20 seconds, 400 degrees, very, very heavy pressure. All right, we finished our pre-press. And now we're going to open our press, we're going to remove our cover sheet, and we're going to let it cool um, because, of course, it's very hot. Um, again, we pressed, we pre-pressed with the decorating side, the imaging side, face up. All we had underneath was our, our cover paper, and then, of course, underneath that, our Nomex pad. We've completed our pre-press step. And we want to wipe the edges down, make sure there's no moisture on the edges. Generally, we do see moisture coming out of the panel. Um, and so we want to get rid of all that. And then we are ready to go as far as the prep step on the paper. So Antoine's going to give it a little bit of pro spray here. Generally, you'd want to do that over a trash can. Want to look at the holes on the back and triple check ourselves for alignment. 
and then we're going to line the print to the print itself. I like to use the Die Trans uh, SPP paper. Great release with minimal dot gain for very sharp images. On this print, we've gone in and put a, a uh, little border around the print to help us with alignment. And so he's going to flip it over here. Okay. Now Antoine loves to now tape the transfer actually to our paper here and that helps it because when this press, press opens up a lot of air rushes in and it's a slow opening press and you really can have the transfer move. So we're going to actually tape the transfer to the, the cover paper. Now the Pro Spray and heat tape is, is two resources we have for holding the transfer. The reason we're doing it this way as opposed to, for instance, taping the transfer around to the back of the panel is because the edges of the natural wood panels are sublimatable. So you really want to design your print with minimal bleed. And then this is the preferred technique because if you wrap that paper around there, um, you're going to have ink because we always need a little bit of bleed, ink that can stain the side of the panel. So this is the technique that has been very successful for us. And we'll continue to improve. And next we're going to put a piece of fabric on top. Typically the fabric we use, we have uh, a couple of pieces cut for different size panels and we're just going to put it on top. Why are we using fabric? Well, what happens is when we heat it, moisture comes out and the moisture has to go somewhere. Well, the fabric, as I tend to believe the, the laws of physics operate, the fabric is like an uncompressible vent. It's going to allow that, that, that moisture to turn into steam, just to migrate out without puddling anywhere on the print. And so we've found fabric works really well you can get away with a lot of things if the panels are very small. You can get away with a piece of paper on top. But fabric we found to be the most reliable way to do larger pieces of metal, larger panels. And now we're ready to press it and um, again refer to our instructions for different. Now as the, as the panel gets bigger, um, think of the cook time as like a pot that, that boils slower because it's big. And so we'll need to increase our time for, for bigger panels and that'll be one of the things that you do in documenting your successes and failures for your heat press. That means we've, we've finished our press and we're ready to open the press. And we're going to remove the fabric first. And it's important that after you remove the fabric, just lay it flat on a table. If not, you'll end up with creases um, where the edge of the panel is. Um, now we're ready to, to see the surprise, see our transfer. And so peeling off, um, obviously that looks unbelievably good. Um, good point when you're tuning in your transfer technique sort of for the first time. The last color to sublimate is black. Note that the dad here is wearing black pants. So often when you're doing a brand new substrate, print a solid black transfer, an RGB of 000. Transfer the whole thing. You can look over it and make sure you've got a a, a deep black, an even consistent black, that's going to let you know that you've really done a good job. You've pressed long enough. Um, the sweet spot for a lot of these products is actually pretty large, but remember your heat press goes up and down in temperature and we want to make sure we press long enough and then just a little bit more to ensure we compensate as presses are going up and down in temperature. Our final step is to flip the panel over and to press again to compensate for any warpage that occurred. 
it's just slightly bowed if you look at it from a side. So it's a very simple step. We do want to let the panel cool first. Then we're going to put our cover on. Then we're going to press it one more time. And again, our instructions will detail our suggested time for this, this last step. And again, it's just because we've heated one side of the material with a lot of heat. The other side we didn't heat. And so that's why the material has um, warped just a little bit. This step would take care of any warpage uh, that occurred in our pressing step. All right, we're finished with that step and we're going to remove the cover sheet. And now it's hot, of course, we're going to let it cool and we will be finished. As you can see, it turned out great. We've got a high value way, a new way for you to display your client's photographs. Today, I'd like to invite you to call us. You can email, call your sales rep, um, whatever is more convenient for you. And we will provide a free, smaller piece of the Chrome Lux natural wood product to ship with your next order so you can try out this great new product. Again, I want to thank uh, Antoine for helping me in our print services today and look forward to receiving your feedback. This has been David Gross with Condi Systems. Till we meet again, thank you.